All my life, I've been trying to find purpose. It's kind of hard to when you've been in the foster system your whole life. Honeycomb Foster Care on Honeycomb Avenue. This is my hood, and it's all I know. It's much harder having to stay here when you don't have anybody but the bees and the neighborhood watch. <laughs> That's what I like to call them. Yes, ma'am. Yes. 9095 Heavenly Gates Road. Yes, ma'am. Right down by Honeycomb. There's this, there's this man trying to rob my house. Hurry before his friends come. He's making some sort of gang sign. Yes. Yeah, aggressive. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. Uh, yes. I don't know. About, about six feet. Hurry before his boys come. Oh no, he's getting away! I really just try to stay out of their way if I can. There isn't a place I call home. It isn't easy out here, so I just do what I've been doing the best way I know how. No method to it, just trying to get to it, that's all. Here's 60 for an Uber and food. And hopefully you get some deodorant too, because rent. Thanks. <sighs> Look, you and I have been over for two years now. Why does it still feel like I'm taking care of you? You need to get a job. The streets are not going to feed you and neither am I anymore. And why the hell do you have the cops knocking at my door? You know I have white neighbors. Is it because you were trespassing? I'm confused. Do you know what they would do if they think I'm doing something illegal? Look, the foster home cannot continue to be an excuse for you forever. And you can't keep coming back here, that's for sure. T, I told you this is the last time. I just needed a place to lay my head for the night. Wow. And the Oscar goes to you, friends. I must have asked for an encore the way you stay telling me that story. That's a lie. You're here all the time. Yeah, well, this is the last time. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Just make sure you stay out of trouble. Oh, and Prince, look at me. Don't be smoking that stuff in my house, okay? White people, remember that. And I'm glad James was nice enough to give you his clothes. Matter of fact, here's the local therapist number. Because at this point, call anybody. I heard Dr. Helens can help you with that addiction of yours. Because I can't. And then I said to her, if you just want me to run the company, just say that. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you're you're like a well-rounded candidate, right? I mean, just look at your resume. It's very impressive. Uh, two years as an executive assistant at a very prestigious firm. Two years at Millennial Financial. I mean, it's just it's a very impressive resume. Very impressive. Well, um, we have your email address and. Uh, Heather here will be reaching out, so we'll be in touch. Maybe with an offer. Just like that on the spot? Uh, 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 not that fast. There are no guarantees. Oh. So uh, you can actually just wait in the lobby. 
Oh, okay. Thank you, Heather, and thank you, Tim. <laughs> I mean, imagine hiring someone like that. Does he really think he could ever work here? And there is never room for someone like that here. It's here. delusion. It is, yeah. I swear, I need some coffee <laughs> with extra cream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh... You do realize, though, he is our best option and his resume is vast. There's no doubt about it. On paper, he is the best candidate. But, I mean, if I had realized... I wouldn't have wasted my time. I mean, his name's not Deontay. I, mean, I thought we were safe. Definitely a liability. Yeah. So, should I tell him to come back in? Ah, uh, nah. Let him sit out there. He'll think we're talking about something important. <laughs> it was a tough 40 days and 40 nights. But Jesus used the scripture to resist the devil. Notice how Saint tried to get Jesus and said, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down, the angels will catch you in verse 6. Uh, -uh see, that's where he went wrong, ladies and gentlemen, because Jesus already knew who he was. And that's why it's very important for you all to know who you are, because then no one can try to tell you to prove what you already know. Exactly. Can I get an amen? Amen. <laughs> God is so good. Anyways, guys, I think we'll wrap up here. I think Pastor James wants to say a few words. Yes, yes. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Kai, great message, as usual. The Lord has really been using you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right, family, I, I just have a quick message before we dismiss today. It's been a little under a year, and the Lord has already done so many great miraculous wonders within this ministry. From outreach to evangelism, you you've been with us on all the evangelisms. And I've just have been so amazed and, and, and so blown away at how many of you whose lives have been transformed right here. People come here not expecting much, I'm sure. But the Lord is with us. I said the Lord is with us. Yes, he is. And wherever the Lord is, his grace and his mercies will always endure. So my prayer today for all of you is that you always remember that the Lord is with you. And his grace and his mercies will endure through you as well. You all are dismissed. Have a blessed day. Good word, man. Good word. So, Kai, what's up, man? What's going on? How's it been? Dad, I mean, Pastor. Mm -hmm. All is well, honestly. But I would say it will help with more fellas join the ministry. Sometimes I feel like some of these ladies that come here just to see me. <laughs> and that's not what I want. I'm guessing guys are just having trouble surrendering to the Father. <laughs> uh, son, it's so much more than that. Come on, sit down. Let's have a talk for a minute. Kai, you must always remember that there's a war going on, son. It's spiritual warfare. But we've already overcome that war by the blood of Jesus. So as long as we stay grounded in his word and connected to him, we'll continue to win that voice until he comes back for us. But then, son, there's another war that's going on. And that war is in the heart of black man. Kai, there's a genocide going on with us. With all these police brutalities. And we as black people, we, we don't help each other with this genocide. How we treat each other in our communities. You know, most of the violence that goes on is, is within our own people. When we really should be uplifting and supporting one another. Then, then you have the struggles of the financial struggles in the home, they can't really support the baby, can't support themselves. And God, all this wickedness that goes on, like the main root of it is the cycle of the missing father. Oh yeah, the cycle of the missing father. Yes, Kai. Kai, it's very prominent in our culture. I mean, you see it all the time. It, it starts out, you go out one night having fun, right? Go to a party, you see a good girl that you like, and then that one, that night of fun turns into sex. And because both parties lack that concern of premarital sex, the girl winds up getting pregnant and she doesn't want to get rid of the baby. She knows all the stories about the trauma that happens when you get an abortion, right? 
And the guy, he doesn't want the child. And he doesn't have a father. He grew up without one, so he doesn't feel the need to claim him. So see, there you have it. That's the cycle of the missing father. His father left him, now he's leaving this child. Do you understand what I'm saying? What do you mean do I understand? That's my story, Dad. You trying to be funny? Kai, I'm not trying to be funny. I'm just trying to... Kai, I'm just trying to be real. Kai, imagine you were still out in them streets selling dope. Lil' Kaden would be the one suffering from your consequences of your actions. Then I would have to take him in and raise him. So son, it's a good thing. It's a very good thing that you're not out in them streets anymore doing that stuff. We praise God. I thank him every day for the transformation that he's done in your heart and your mind. For his glory. But back to my story. So you have that cycle. And that scenario of the guy not wanting to be there, right? And now you have the scenario when the guy actually wants to be there, but now because he has a child on the way, he, he adapts this, 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 this get it how I can mentality by any means necessary, even if it's illegal things like selling drugs. And that's what he turns to, just to support his family. But then he gets locked up thrown away, and then there it is again, the cycle of the missing father. You know, Dad, you were telling me the story every day growing up, and I see now. Good, son. Good. And I'm so thankful that the Lord brought you in my life when he did. Because, Kyle, you've been such a blessing to me, son. You've been so good. I really hope things going well over on that side, cause things going too good to be true here on this side. Ain't talking a while, I hope you just living your best life. All your goals you focused on, I hope you catching your stride. Energy you put out is what you get back. Positive attitudes and manifesting big bags. Yeah, peep that. Peep that. You sure? Yeah. Come on now. This don't sound like the first song you, uh, cause... Man, the first song, that was like two years ago, bro. Uh, There's right. growth in this. Come okay. on now. We gonna... See me going past you while I'm waving my goodbye. Yeah. Niggas say they real, but they moving in Can the sky. Do this? Yeah. Every time you know that I come with that pressure. Most electrify and I feel just like the rest Yo, you did this is good, huh? Yeah. Bars. Bars. This made me better. Bars. Yo, you did this in one take? You were shitting right here when I did it. Yeah, I did what? it in one take, bro. I wish I could do that. Well, you, well, you know, you do have to be able to rap first, D. But, like, for me, this whole rap thing is... Trey, you're not gonna keep disrespecting me like this. Okay, my fault, bro. Let me, let me stop joking with you, bro. My bad, my bad. You know, I just... I'll be feeling myself when I start recording, bro. You know what I mean? But... You know, it is kind of late, and I know you did say you got this whole interview thing with, like, your dream job huh? that you've been looking at since you were in, like, college and stuff. Interview? Yeah. Yeah, maybe before you came over, you said you got to prepare for your job interview Tomorrow? and so on. So, yeah. Yeah. What are you doing? It's kind of but you kind of need me, though. You need me to be here to make the beat. You need me to be here to write the song. Oh. Trey needs Dory okay. to make the music. Oh, Trey needs you. Yeah. Okay. Can 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 Dorian EQ for me? E who's EQ? I don't know who EQ. Is. Ah, yes, yeah, that's, that's what I figured. You know what? I do got that interview to go to. All right. I, I don't even know, know what EQ you. means. Okay, that's cool. right. I'll see, you, bro. Right. Oh, is that what they taught you in college? Yeah. You know. All right, we we'll go. We'll work on that. <laughs> we'll work on that, bro. And that boy a fool, bro. After all these years, I'm glad he in college though. He's doing his thing, man. Like. I'm happy for him. <sighs> yeah. Son. Look, what do you want? Come on, man. You need to move back home, man. Stop that music. It's not gonna get you anywhere. You really need to give it up. Got time for that. 
Candy? Are you sure? And your name is Prince Jamal Therese. Prince Jamal Terrence. Are you sure you just don't want me to call you Demarcus? What? No, that is not even close. Anyway, what brings you in today? You have a drug problem. Go figure, right? Okay, say it with me. The first step. The first step. Is admitting. Is admitting. That you will never be good enough. That I... I don't know why they send your type to my sessions anyway. The only therapy you need is realizing your kinds of people are wasting my time with your fragmented views of life. You don't need therapy. It's more like real life intervention. Ma'am, what? Now just leave DeMarcus like you always do. Like you all always do. How much? $15. You said what? $15. You're lying. Yeah, because you know it's like electric. I wonder how much this does. Probably too damn much. Because you know they this shit takes premium. Yeah, it does. It does, right? Yeah. Yo, you trying to run it up? Oh, bet there's people on the court. Let's play them for money. D, you know you can't play. You definitely shouldn't be playing for money. I'm not trying to go broke for you. Who told you that? You have no faith in me at all. No faith in you at all? What happened the last time we played? We lost 50, right? And how many points you have? You right. Let's go. All right, come on with your no skill having that. Yo! What's good? What's up, man? Y'all fools in the wild, man. This is my guy, though. Yo, where do I know you from? Oh, I don't know, man. We we probably worked together or something. I've had many jobs. Oh, I know. You went to Salem. Salem High? Nah. I used to be around there, though. That's right around from uh my house. It's a small world, ain't it? Man, but y'all come on. Y'all talking way too much, bro. I'm trying to hoop. Yeah, because I definitely need to come out here for all this dialogue. Wait, Trey, you good? Man, I'm all good. Why? You're not. I can just tell something to you up, bro. Come on, let's chop it up real quick. Nah, for real, because as men, we don't all talk. Man, you trying to stop the game for us to be soft? Man, have some emotions for once, bro. Yeah, I'm, I'm good, man. All right, guys, look. I'm not doing that good. My pops is tripping again. He's been drinking all day. Drinking and calling me just to let me know that because I do music, he's disappointed in me. Hmm. Like, what kind of father does that? It's like he thinks what I'm doing is, is a joke. And, and every time he just gets drunk, he finds a way to remind me just of that. Man, you gotta man up and let that go. Like, who cares what he thinks? Just do you. Yeah, I'm definitely going through it too. I definitely feel as though, as the big black guy in the room full of white people, I kind of have to put on sometimes. And I have to come off as approachable. But no matter how I act and no matter what I do, I always fall short because of my skin color. Yo, why do you talk like that? Like what? Never mind. <laughs> Look, that's not what's important right now. How come I can't have a father that supports what I do? It's honeycomb. We're in the hood anyway. Out here, you either become an athlete or a rapper. It's like nobody expects anything else, so we just do it. Mm-hmm. Hey, it's all we can do. But it's not, is what I'm saying. Don't y'all see? That's why niggas don't make it from out of here. It's a box mentality. 
a self-created box that we just live in and we don't try to get out of. Hey, y'all want to know something? What? Uh, the other day, I was at Tiana's place, right? <laughs> you still seeing her? No. Guys, do you know that the cops must took me to jail because I needed to lay down my head somewhere? I have no place to call home. Man, I thought you was at your folks' place. See, that's the thing, Vaughn. Who is it that I can call mom or dad? Who are my folks? I have no place to stay. And there's no place I can call home. Like, the other day, Tiana took me in because the cops wanted to take me to jail. It's like the world don't owe us nothing. So, all that togetherness stuff you're trying to put on us, like, you can keep that. We just gotta get it how we can. Diesel? Nigga, what? Diesel, that's your name. You grew up in Honeycomb Foster Care down the street. Your name is Diesel. I lived there. I went to Honeycomb Foster Care, and we were eight. You and your friends called me everything but my name. I remember. Oh, that was you? Oh, snap, man. Hey, my fault, man, my fault. You know, we were kids, and like you said, I didn't know what I was doing, man. You know, and foster care is just a number. And I was angry all the time, and I didn't have an outlet, so feeling like that was just second nature to me. Yes, yeah, so you guys have more in common than you think. Hey, I love you guys. Real talk. Well, we got this man to break. <laughs> <laughs> so, the moral of the story is, we are more alike than we know. And not just because we grew up in foster care, and not just because we're from Honeycomb. Uh, no, it's because we're all black men fighting the injustices of a system and a society in the world that's totally against us. We are one, and we need to break the ongoing cycle of disconnecting our community. Yeah, that's true. That's real, bro. But I'm trying to hoop. First team to 11. I got Kyle on my team, cause Dorian he can't hoop. Hey.